So let's jump into the first section of the exam requirements. Those requirements say, describe AI workloads and considerations, and it's worth 15 to 20% of the exam. So those of you who have been in one of my Azure courses know that I tend to go through this section by section. So the first section talks about artificial intelligence workloads. We're going to talk in this section of the course about the features of common AI workloads. And then in the following section, we'll talk about some of the guiding principles for responsible AI. So what are some common AI workloads, especially when it comes to Azure capabilities? So the first one we'll talk about is what's called prediction and demand forecasting. I can give you a table. I made up this table on screen with number of visitors and the amount of sales that came from those visitors. And maybe if you were looking at this, you might be able to infer how many sales would come if I gave you an arbitrary number like the 786 or 362. It's not entirely obvious if there's a relationship between visitors and sales. But if I was to plot this into what's called a scatter graph, then you can sort of see there is a general relationship between visitors and sales. And in fact, if I draw a line trying to fit the scatter graph, you can see that it's basically a linear relationship. So computers can actually do this, right? So that's one of the things of machine learning is being able to be pointed to a set of data and then for it to be able to determine what the best algorithm is for that and then be able to predict the results for things that we don't know. So it's quite common for in machine learning to have it do what's called supervised learning, which is you give the machine data, all the relevant data you have, you label that data, you tell it the field that you want it to predict, and it's able to develop a model to which it can then use to make future predictions. Now you've probably seen this because you know, so much of our life now is, is auto-correct and, you know, auto-suggest and things like that. You type on your phone, it suggests the next word. And this is a famous Google homepage where you start typing and it guesses what you intend. And this is based on actual search queries and what would be the most likely next word or the next few words based on what I just typed. Companies like Netflix use the same type of prediction models to predict what I might like to see. This isn't my Netflix, but you know, somebody watched New Girl and then got recommended. Those are not hand curated. Those are basically analysis of historical data of existing users and figuring out which of those shows people like. We see this on Amazon as well. So you can see that based on your purchases, based on your browsing, these are things that the machine are predicting that you might like. The second thing that a machine learning can do, a typical workload, could be called anomaly detection. Now this is a more complicated form of prediction. We can see on this graph here, the blue solid line represents the actual result and the slightly shaded blue line, hopefully you can see it, it would have been the machine's prediction for what should have happened. And then anything that falls outside that shaded area is an anomaly. And so you can have your machine learning algorithm looking at any kind of irregular result that has a pattern to it and determine when something isn't quite right. It could be your heartbeat, could be some log files in your computer, could be some sensor from your Internet of Things device. Here's a much more complicated pattern and you can see that the machine was trained on the pattern and then was able to make a prediction based on that. And then if something falls outside of the pattern, then it's able to detect an anomaly. You're able to set the sensitivity of this. It can be, you know, 85% sensitive, 90%, 95%. And so this is a one great use of machine learning. We could also use machine learning for computer vision tasks. So here's an example of an image that was uploaded to Microsoft's computer vision API. And you can see on the right that a computer was able to examine the picture. It was able to identify the face, which is the blue box. And it was able to identify a description and a set of tags based on this picture, right? The description says a man swimming in a pool of water, and it has an 89% confidence. 
So this is a computer looking at this image, never having seen it before and being able to detect what it's seeing. I also think it's cool that it's able to look at human faces and identify whether the, the content is adult content, it says false, and identify the approximate ages and the assumed genders of those faces. So that's, there's probably a use for that. Another good workload for AI functions would be something like natural language processing. So you can say, you know, in human language, what time are you open until today? And a computer algorithm can understand that you're asking about the hours of operation for today. What time do you close? When do you close? What are your hours of operation? Which time can I come? All of these things are in equivalent in our language in English, but the computer needs to infer what they're asking, and that's natural language processing. Related to that is knowledge mining. So giving the computer to a blob account or to a table and maybe a collection of PDFs, images, Word documents, PowerPoints, and having it sort through that into a searchable index. So if you've got a bunch of different types of documents, like I said, PDFs and images and Word documents, it's a very difficult search task. Now, Google is one of the leaders in search. I'm sure Bing has a leadership in some areas as well. Knowledge mining is the ability for you to be able to point that kind of search engine at your collection of documents and have it organize it, find some organization in the clutter. And the fifth type of AI workload it would be conversational AI. Now, this is somewhat related to the natural language processing, but having the chatbot able to reply to you and then turning that into like an application where you can say, do you have this? And they say, oh, what do you mean? And you can clarify it. And then it says, yes, we have that. So that's a conversational AI. They're called chatbots. You can install this on your website. You can hook up with, you know, Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp or any of these chat technologies that it supports. And this is, a, you know, one growing area of computer programming and it's powered by AI. So that's just an overview of some of the common AI workloads that we tend to see and that Azure supports. Hi guys, this is Scott Duffy from GetCloudSkills.com and I do would love to invite you. I do have courses on all of them and the links are in the description. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below this video. Thank you so much for watching. Click the thumbs up button if you like this video. There's the subscribe button down below if you want to see more videos like this as I create them.